Hello, welcome to the Dementia Doctor. I'm Dr. Verma, a board certified neurologist with special qualification in child neurology as well as training in adult behavioral neurology. Today we're going to talk about a specific topic that comes up commonly as a point of discussion in my dementia patient consultations. That is the genetic risk of developing Alzheimer's. We are going to specifically focus on one gene, that is the EPOE gene, and we're going to focus on the risk of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease in relation to this gene. Now, late onset Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of Alzheimer's disease. And when we say late onset, we are basically referring to the age of onset of the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease that being 65 years or older for late onset Alzheimer's disease so let's jump right in we're going to talk about the EPOE gene we're going to talk about how this gene is inherited and uh, what different forms or types of inheritance patterns mean for your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease what are the current recommendations to test or not to test for this gene as well as how are these recommendations changing with the advent of anti amyloid therapies namely lecanemab and denanemab so starting with the basics, EPOE. So EPOE stands for epolipoprotein. This is a protein that helps with cholesterol transportation in our brains. And we all have neurons. These are the thinking cells that we have in our brains. And every neuron has a long wire that goes to communicate information from that cell to the different other cells. And as you can imagine, we have wires for our electrical equipment and these wires need to be insulated. Similarly, neurons have this wire that is called exon and it needs to be insulated. And that's where EPOE as well as cholesterol comes in handy. So now that we have reviewed the function of EPOE, let's talk about the genetics of EPOE. So EPOE, um, when we talk about the genetics, we go back to the biology 101 and we remember how we inherit one of our genes from our mom and one from our dad. And based on this unique combination, we have our characteristics such as our hair color and other characteristics. Now, in terms of EPOE, we have three different options to be inheriting from our parents. So we can uh, inherit EPOE2, EPOE3, or EPOE4. Because this gets fairly complicated, I like to use an ice cream analogy. So imagine you walk in an ice cream bar and you have three different flavors of ice cream to choose from. That is to say three different isoforms of the same gene, EPOE, to choose from. And uh, you, but you only have m enough money to buy two scoops of ice cream. So you probably end up buying um, vanilla and chocolate. And uh, that is very similar in terms of how you're inheriting the EPOE but the only difference being um, in case of um, EPOE gene you don't really have a choice of which one you will inherit which uh, which specific um, isoform or which specific flavor of the ice cream that you're going to inherit um, and so you can imagine when we have these three different forms of EPOE um, we can have different combinations of EPOE and that could uh, that could mean you have EPOE 2 2 EPOE 2 3 3 uh, 2 4 3 3 3, 3, 4, and 4, 4. Now, when we talk about these genes, EPOE2 is the one that is the most, um, that is the best one to have because this is associated with uh, lowering your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And um, EPOE3 is the one that is associated with keeping your risk neutral. And EPOE4, on the other hand, increases your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. But as we just reviewed, you will have a combination of these two genes. So when we talk about the risk of developing Alzheimer's and we think about these risks, it becomes fairly complicated. So what we use as a reference is EPOE33 makeup. And this is where we say, well, this is the one makeup or genetic makeup we have where we have the neutral risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And if you have um, any combinations with the genotype two, then you lower your risk of developing Alzheimer's. But if you have any combinations with four, you increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So um, for instance, if someone has EPOE34, their risk of developing Alzheimer's from someone who has EPOE33 goes up by four times. And uh, if you have EPOE44, your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease from someone who has EPOE33 goes up to about 14 times. So this is very pertinent information you can imagine. And so you may ask, why is this not necessarily a part of formal testing for Alzheimer's disease? Well, the 
there are multiple reasons for this, but one of the most important reason is it is a risk factor and it does convey very pertinent information in terms of your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, but it doesn't tell you um, a definitive information in terms of whether you're going to develop Alzheimer's disease or not. And there are so many other risk factors which can kind of change your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So because of the fact that it doesn't really give you a very definitive answer of your developing um, of whether you are going to develop Alzheimer's disease or not that is why it's not recommended to be something that we test at baseline for everyone recommended at baseline we're going to talk about how this recommendation changes if you are someone who is eligible to get the anti-amyloid therapies namely lacanumab and denanumab as well as someone who um, is also interested in getting these drugs so if you if you kind of meet these two criteria then apoe genetic testing is strongly recommended by clinicians as well as fda why is that well as with all drugs, these drugs are also associated with some side effects. And one of the most important side effects to keep in mind is ARIA. ARIA is an acronym. It stands for Amyloid Related Imaging Abnormalities. And it comes in two varieties. Um, ARIA E standing for uh, edema or brain swelling and ARIA H standing for hemorrhage or bleeding in the brain. So you can imagine these are potentially life-threatening side effects. And um, the, the degree to which someone can develop these side effects depends on their ApoE genotype makeup. So if you are someone who has ApoE44 kind of genetic combination, you are at a much higher risk of developing ARIA as someone compared to um, someone say who has ApoE2 or ApoE3 combination. So because this affects um, your risk benefit discussion with your doctor it's really important that uh, you have this information before you get the infusions and that is why we strongly recommend getting tested for this if you're considering these um, therapies as well as if you're meeting the criteria to get these drugs so i hope this video was helpful and in the future videos we will talk more about these drugs the eligibility criteria and the other genes that are associated with the risk of developing alzheimer's till then goodbye and take care